Okay, we are here with uh, Root Source, and today I want to ask Gadone to uh, tell us uh, where we are right now. I'm very uh, happy to introduce you to the Friends of Zion, uh, Friends of Zion Museum in the center of town in Jerusalem. Uh, this is the second time that I've visited here today with you, Bob. Um, I visited here a few years ago before it was even open officially. And I am so impressed and so inspired by this small diamond in, in Israel, in Jerusalem, that I think it is uh, possibly uh, more important to come here than any other place in Israel. Certainly one of the places that must be on every pilgrim or visitor's uh, itinerary when they come to visit Israel. Today we're also privileged to be with Ilan Skoldik, uh, director here, and uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, this museum, how, how did it come, up, come about? So this museum is really the birth child of uh, Dr. Mike Evans. Um, he wrote a book called The History of Christian Zionism. That um, book is 800 pages of history. He then challenged uh, a group of Israeli artists, we had at the height 125 uh, top Israeli artists, 25% of the uh, art population in Israel working on this project wow. um, in order to take it into a one-hour experience covering from Abraham to the creation of the State of Israel using the most unbelievable technology that you have ever seen. And I can attest to that. I was with Gadon. We went through. I went through uh, this uh, museum program. It took about an hour to go through, and I was just uh, so impressed. Uh, also, I was surprised at, at the location. How convenient this is to the old city, to Mamila Mall. Uh, how did this location ever come about? So the Friends of Zion Museum was uh, made in such a way that uh, there was no other place that we would need to be. Jerusalem is the center of the world, and it is the center of the state of Israel. It is the center of the heart of the Jewish people. Um, there is no other place that we could possibly think of in order to uh, take the message of um, love and take the message of bringing people together, bringing people from different religions, from different walks of life, encouraging people to support the state of Israel. There was no other place to speak that message than from the heart of the State of Israel from Jerusalem. Gadon, you went through the uh, exhibit. Tell us what uh, touched you today. Uh, as uh, was mentioned here, the exhibit goes from creation of the world and the first blessings of God to Abraham through uh, the uh, exile of uh, Israel from the land of Israel for close to 2,000 years, and then the, return, the beginning the sprouting of the return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel and how much certain Christian leaders were able to be influential and pivotal in that story. Uh, it talked about the uh, Christian visionaries uh, such as Queen Elizabeth uh, uh, who, uh, who foresaw that the Jewish people must return to the land of Israel. You mean Queen Victoria actually? Of course. Did I say anything else? <laughs> you said Elizabeth. <laughs> Queen Victoria. Uh, and um, Queen, Vi Queen Victoria, for example, who uh, uh, established the Palestine Education Fund, which to this day is very important for learning about the history and the archaeology of the land of Israel. Uh, other uh, important names that came up were none other than Harry Truman, who uh, was so impressed with the, this important story of uh, the Jewish people and their return to the land of Israel, that he was the first uh, world leader to recognize the state of Israel in 1948 when it was established. And uh, through uh, um, Christian military heroes who taught uh, the Jewish people how to fight and were, you could perhaps could, could call some of them, the grandfathers of the IDF. And uh, m what was so uh, touching and emotional for me were the famous uh, Christians who saved Jews during the Holocaust. We just uh, the other day visited in, uh, in Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Museum of, uh, of the State of Israel, the official Holocaust Museum, in, in just a few moments of, uh, of a video, of like an interactive video here at the Friends of Zion 
museum, we were able to understand some of those leaders like Oscar Schindler or Corey Ten Boom. These are names that, uh, as somebody who uh, has been following the story of Christian Zionists, pro-Israel Christians uh, for about a decade, they're familiar to me, but I think that it is urgent and imperative that all visitors to Jerusalem, Christian and, may I say, even especially Jewish, that they come here and they learn the stories of uh, these tremendous friends of Israel, the Friends of Israel Museum. Uh, we went through the museum with a, uh, an Orthodox Jewish family from uh, Muncie, New York, and he said, this is just unbelievable, the story, everybody's got to come here. And I agree with that as well. <laughs> One of the things that's uh, impressed me, Ilan, is the uh, Jewish staff that's here. It's just, you know, it looks like Jerusalem residents, you know, people local uh, running it. We, uh, and I wonder, what is the, what's been the Jewish reaction to the museum? So we've had over 70,000 people come to the museum. And what is unbelievable about it is that half of those people are Jewish. Now, the museum has two um, messages that it's trying to get out. The first message is to people from all over the world. It is taking them and encouraging them to become friends of Zion, encouraging them to fight BDS, and encouraging them to stand with the Jewish people in the state of Israel and become friends. We already have over three million of those through our social media networks. And our goal is to reach 10 million by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. We are also functioning um, on the level of the Jewish people. Now, the Jewish people that come to this museum realize that they're not alone in this world. They realize that they have friends, and a lot of friends, who support them and who are there with them and who are uh, rooting for them and praying for them around the world. It is also here to give them hope and for them to realize, for us to realize, that we are uh, here for a reason a reason that goes all the way back through to Abraham. Um, we didn't just choose this land, not Uganda. There's, no, there's a reason why we are here. And that reason is a reason that dates back thousands of years. Also incorporated in some of the exhibits is, uh, you know, we get to hear from uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and so forth. Uh, have some of these very notable uh, Jewish residents been through the museum? We've had, of course, uh, Shimon Peres, who is our international chairman, has been through the museum, as well as uh, former chief of staff Dan Chalutz, um, Dani Atom, uh, general in the Israeli army, Kobi Oshrat, the person who wrote Hallelujah, um, and many other people who are actually members of our board. Uh, we've had uh, people from around the world, um, generals from the army, um, actors from South America. We've had NBA stars uh, come through the museum. Um, the president is scheduled to be here because, of course, uh, the uh, coffee shop or one of the first stops is a historic building, uh, which was actually home to his family. Oh um, my goodness! President this, Rivlin. Uh, president Rivlin. The street wow. that we're on, Rivlin Street, is uh, named after his uh, his grandfather. Um, the neighborhood that we're in is a historic neighborhood. It is the third neighborhood built outside of the old city walls. Um, so the historic building that we're sitting in is. Uh, has has value to the president. Well, uh, I want to say that I've been very touched. This is now on a must-see list uh, for me, for any friends that come. So thank you so much. No problem.